good evening i hope i'm audible and visible to you are you facing any technical errors like my sound if you are facing an issue with the sound like last day or something please do uh, please let me know so that i can make an arrangement otherwise we'll start the section and today we are going to do a uh, study important section that is emergency provision it is basically very interesting because we are have we have undergone this process known as emergency yeah so before starting it uh, please someone let me know any issues going on with the sound or something guys please let me know any 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 problem with this sound do you know there is a tricky way there is a okay fine everything is clear so we'll start the section yeah i'm just checking no yesterday it happened because every yesterday it was like there was some issues with the sound that's why so in between any problem is going on please do inform me so welcome back to an academy and about me i'm liam old i completed my masters in english uh, i'm a research scholar right now and experience as a career counselor more than three years of teaching in the upsc and i have i taught nearly uh, hundreds of aspirants This is my Telegram channel link, and this is my Unacademy profile. Simple, humble. How to join it? There is something known as description in the course which is given. No, there is something known as description box given there. So you just join over the description box and uh, educators channel link and uh, Leah Moles Biju course link. So we provide you with two different types of program. That is like Plus and Iconic. In Plus, you get live classes. A serious unlimited practice and a structured schedule okay so another problem how can you pay it? can you pay it monthly wise yes of course you guys can pay it monthly wise like uh, the actual price for the course fees like for suppose it is for one year it is 49,000 rupees you can get a discount of 10 percentage using the code biju that is biju and you can avail it for 44,550 rupees. This amount you can pay as monthly basis. How? Like you have to just pay 3,713 rupees using EMI. And there is no cost EMI. And in iconic courses, you get live classes, test series, unlimited practice, structured course, you get a personal coach in addition to it and daily question and answer writing practice and a study planner, personalized feedback. 12 months is like 69,500 rupees. Uh, see, you, you can get it for like 62,550 rupees. Here also monthly payment is possible like 5,213 rupees per month you can pay. That is... 69,500 is actual course. You can you get a 10% discount on the course using the code BIJU and uh, you get it for 62,550 rupees. One month is like 5,000 rupees. Six months is like 22,500 rupees. 12 months is like 27,500 rupees. This is the actual price for an optional course. You can get it like 10% discount like 24,750 rupees using the code BIJU. And monthly payment is possible, like 2000, uh, six, uh, not 63 rupees only you have to pay. This is regarding the uh, a submit which is going to transform your CSE preparation that is on 
30th and 31st of this year 2000 two point summit a two day curated especially for the civil service aspirant okay so this is a free to attend the submit these are the key speakers of the submit p chidambaram member of parliament rajya sabha and former minister of finance of india so you get kapil sibal a member of parliament in rajya sabha kailesh satyadri is a co-founder of Bachpan Bacho Andolan and Global Man March Against Child Labor. We are also having speaker Durga Shakti Nagpal. She is a deputy secretary in the Department of Commerce and Ministry of Commerce. Ashok Kema, principal secretary, Archives Ecology and Ohio Museums Haryana. Harbhajan Singh and of course you all know about him. Ajit Rande, Chief Economist, Aditya Bala Group, Kumar Vishwas. And he is actually a Indian Hindi poet, politician, and a lecturer. Anil Swarup, former Secretary of Government of India. And Praveen Koswan, IFS officer, that is Indian Forest Service. So, these are the members what we are going to have a speak. So, please do join it, please do participate it, and just take your neck of uh, CSC preparation to the next level. So this is like two insightful days, 70 iconic speakers, talks and discussion, hand on on workshops. Yeah, so please do be a part of our submit. We are conducting a competition known as UPSC Unacam Academy Comeback that is India's largest fortnightly for contest of UPSC. It is on February 7, 2021. Please do enroll yourself. Like three months subscription course you get at race, rank is 1, 2, 3, rank 4, 2, 150, like 1000 rupees voucher. 45 minutes, 60 questions, 13 combat, 6 section, related scoring, and it is on alternative Sundays. UPSC CC optional plus UPSC GS, you can avail it uh, together. When you're availing it together, no, you just have uh, some percentage of discount, like 15 percentage extra discount, you get it. 12 months is like 88,705 rupees, but you can access it for 70,103 rupees using the code BIJ, that is Biju. And uh, you have to pay only 5,842 per month. Yes, there is. EMI options available. That is monthly payment is possible with the platform. If anybody want to know about our courses, please do. Let me know. So now we will start. So we are in a plan to hike the iconic subscription place. So before that, if you are interested, please do join. Yep. So, what do you know about the term emergency? You all might have heard about the term emergency, right? In your way, in your life, or somewhere or some at uh, some point of time, you may have undergone something very urgent. So, you all have undergone something known as emergency. So, I hope you all know the meaning of the word emergency. Yeah, if an accident is happening, uh, if an accident has occurred, what will happen? Yes. So, what is uh, what is emergency? 
so everybody in your situation no one or in other situation might have undergone this process of emergency definitely yeah so it is a different perspective when you come into a personal perspective emergency is something different so that sometime you met with an accident some of your friend need a blood what happened some of your blood or friend want a blood so it will is an emergency situation yeah so is the same emergency has been discussed in our constitution yes in constitution also discuss about emergency but that emergency is occurring due to was some accidents or something known as war or internal aggression yeah such a state such a condition can occur in everywhere even in the country yes there is a place that we are going to see about the emergency yeah so we'll see what is emergencies in today's lecture it is much interesting some fights uh, some problems so after some emergency after a situation of emergency in 1972 there were introduced a lot of changes a new form of politics has arisen in the country so this term is much important as an indian at least you you writing civil service or not but you really want to know the situation of emergency and how it has taken a new political sphere in the country See, till 1970 or 1970s there was only one party was ruling in india they were dominating but what happened after 1970 we are having coalition governments uh, so we are having the emergence of new party that is known as bjp you can see the emergence of a new party that is bjp all this happened because of this word emergency and now we are going to see the emergency provisions which is prescribed in our constitution it is much interesting okay the story is really interesting because this is led to a new transformation a new way politics see any sound problem if it is there please do let me know no sound issues no i'm asking in between in between because last day there was a sound issue no that's the reason so we are going to discuss upon emergency yeah so which article discuss about emergency in indian constitution which article which articles is discussing about emergency in indian constitution i told you no what is this this word is much important because it paved the way for a new politics till 1970 uh, this 1970s we are having only one political party in the country now how many political party has been there in the country means in the as a major political party two parties are the right the emergence of bjp this happened because of emergency have you heard about something known as mini constitution 42nd amendment act this happened due to this emergency it is a situation which changed the entire phase of indian politics now we see about it so which are the articles discussing about this emergency provisions do you know someone if anyone knows uh, the provisions definitely i'll be discussing it in detail it is much interesting thing okay it is more or less like political story we are studying so can someone tell me which are the articles is discussing about a emergency article 352 to article 360 okay article 352 to article 360 deals with emergency provision 
so emergency can be arise due to there is a war there is a war in the country that is india is india and pakistan is on war so we can declare the government can declare emergency provision okay and external aggression there is an internal war internal some rebellion is going on in such a situation if government wants they can uh, proclaim this emergency situation how is the farmers uh, problem is going on right now yeah it is a very peaceful protest so you can't uh, act this emergency if this pre peaceful protest is being changing into a revolutionary protest by using the arms then the government can declare emergency in the entire country so there are provisions for it i just it's a quoting an example okay it's not like that uh, it is it is one of the peaceful movement which has been going on in the country see why this emergency don't worry i'm just discussing the first things and all then it's not as the rationale why we are having why the why we should have a emergency uh, see sometimes we are having any protest some uh, suppose a state two or three states in a in a country uh, in a 28 there are 28 states in india right now so three states let it be x y z three states uh, together decided that we wanted to form a separate country yeah so what is it they are uh, acting against the government they are just proclaiming that we want freedom so yes so three states decided yeah, we are not going to be a part of india anymore we wanted to form a new country named x so they are protesting against the government so the government decided it to have to suppress this movement government can declare emergency why if the government is not declaring emergency there is a scope there is a probability that it is spreading to another states of uh, india so in order to safeguard unity integrity and security of the country in order to safeguard unity uh, to safeguard the unity integrity and security of the country the democratic political system and constitution in order to protect our constitution the basic structure of the constitution to safeguard the unity and integrity of the country if a situation demands you can the country can declare emergency yep See, you know that our constitution is an amphibious character. Why it is not as amphibious characters? It show the features of federal structure of government and unitary structure of government. So, national emergency. Can be declared under article 352 of the constitution. So, we are going to see this emergency provisions. What happened during this uh, Indira Gandhi case and all, we are going to see. Yes. So, the term emergency may be defined as a difficult situation arising suddenly and demanding immediate action by public authorities and the powers specially granted to uh, them by constitution or otherwise to meet such ex exigencies. Yes. So the term, the term may be defined as a difficult situation. It is one of the most difficult situations. So word from word, this is emergency provisions has been taken. We already stated uh, so in the first chapter that we are a borrowed constitution because we have borrowed many things from many countries. So from word as we uh, from word as 
or from where did we have borrowed this emergency provisions we have borrowed emergency provisions from the vermeer constitution of germany how many types of emergencies are there mainly there are three types of emergencies national emergency which is provided under uh, article 352 financial emergency and state emergency due to the failure of state mechanism this two emergencies that is national emergency and financial emergency is much important and there is a third situation that is article 356 which is arising out of the constitutional missionary in practice the failure of constitutional missionaries in practice so we'll be dealing it all with the details so first you have to understand yeah there are three provisions three types of national emergencies being done and this article is very important for the prelims point of view national emergency under article 352 financial emergency under article 360 and uh, what is it third kind of situation which is under article 356 the state emergency is something that is always happening in the country not in one or two times it happens many times uh, so every state especially with this northeastern states and all not so many times you can see this um, failure of the constitutional missionaries and being taken by the governor simply this failure of the third one governor's rule yes now we are going to see the national emergency under article 352 national emergency under 352 so what is this national emergency under 352 So, like uh, when you're coming to 1975, you're going back to history. This is very unified to 1977. India witnessed the pro thing known as national emergency, which is considered as the darkest phase of Indian constitution. Sorry, yeah, the darkest phase of Indian nationalism. The most important darkest phase of Indian nationalism, you can see it in the uh, between this period, that is from 1975 to 1977 the darkest phase of indian democracy yeah why this happened this is because of national emergency so we'll see the first of all the story of the national emergency So, you know, 1975, who was the Prime Minister? See, uh, till 19, uh, before 1975, at the time of 1975, there were wars going in the country. Yeah, there were wars. Wars, wars being, uh, we are having a war with Bangladesh and all. We had war, okay. Means Pakistan. We had a war with Pakistan. It was being going on at that time. We are helping it. So, there was an external disturbance. Due to the external disturbance, national emergency was being proclaimed so it was going on that at that point of time after the national emergency indira gandhi conducted election okay it was a point of time when election was being conducted and do you know the person who was against indira gandhi Can someone tell me? So, in 1970, there was an India-China war was also going. Yeah. So, we had external disturbances. That is, that is in uh, 25th uh, June 1975, the Indira Gandhi has revoked this uh, na uh, national emergency for the first time. So, 1975, so, uh, she was against Raj Narayan uh, and what happened means, what happened? 
basically she had done some malpractices to become the prime minister of the country <coughs> excuse me <coughs> <coughs> And the person who contested opposite to her went to the court and the court declared the same. So in order to normalize the situation, uh, she wanted to be in power. She wanted to continue in power so that she take the advice of Fakhruddin Ali Ahmad. See, Fakhruddin Ali Ahmad was like a more or less like a puppet in the hands of this uh, Madam Indra Gandhi, the then Prime Minister. So what happened? Fakhruddin Ali Ahmad declared a state of, uh, uh, so Fakhruddin Ali Ahmad, what he did you know, he advised uh, Indira Gandhi that if you are declaring national emergency under article 352, you don't want to resign the power, you can remain in power, yeah, you can uh, see already we are having problem with this uh, India-China war has been going on and in this time if you are proclaiming war, and you said uh, telling yeah this is possibility there is a possibility of it what so what will happen definitely you can continue in power there you don't want to resign the power you can uh, remain in power yeah so hearing this advice for the first time in india the india indira gandhi government it, she wanted to remain in power so she declared emergency by taking the advice of fakhruddin ali ahmad and it continued like 21 months. It is considered as the darkest period of the Indian democracy. It is also known as the death of democracy. It is considered as the darkest phase and it is a death of democracy. Why? Many atrocities has happened in the country. So how many times national emergency has been declared in the country? Totally now it is three times. Okay. So that is like in 1962, in 1971 and it is in 1975. This is a three, three times we have declared so far this uh, emergency that is first with China, 97 with Pakistan and 1975 she told that it is a problem of internal uh, rebellion. She, she declared it. So what is it? So like uh, in 1971, so why she declared? So I basically told the uh, gist of the story. We have to go into detail. Then you understand about it. Why you have to understand? No, because after the national emergency of the, this 1975, we have a new phase of politics. The new phase of politics being begin. The beginning of the new phase of politics is from there. Yeah. So 1975, this is a time period. Okay, 1971. Uh, 1971, Indira Gandhi won with much majority. Okay. See, the country was in 1971. Uh, we had a war with the Pakistan and we had faced huge loss. Our GDP has just come down like this. It was going up like this. The GDP of the country was that is gross domestic product was going up what happened suddenly it was revoked and it just come down in 1971 and there are many crises and unemployment was being there so what happened the railway workers strike led by george fernandez in 90s was severely suppressed by the government so george fernandez you might have come across him you he was a prominent figure on that days of politics that is in 1974 no he just suppressed the war. So what happened? Allahabad High Court. At this point of time, this Allahabad High Court told that Indra Gandhi has come to power by this malpractice. So she take the advice of Fakhruddin Ali Ahmad, then the president. He was like a puppet in her hands. Okay. And at this point of time, Janada party leader, that is Jayaprakash Narayan, JP, he told that the, we are going to have a Sampurna Kranti, that is we are going to have a uh, total revolution. And he 
publicly announced the government uh, as the military and police officers see please don't do please don't do or by the unconstitutional order by miss intra gandhi so the, all these problems are heating up now so she wanted to be in power so she declared uh, since this was a situation this is only like this jay prakash narayan said that you please don't obey her unconstitutional order she he requested to the military and police so it was like a aggression so she wanted to stop it she declared emergency yeah so so what happened during the emergency civil liberties were declared no liberty no equality no fraternity many atrocities see the other problem what other atrocities was being going on have you heard the process of sterilization have you heard about sanjay gandhi yeah you might know about rajiv gandhi he was a prime minister of the country he was a very good person he had uh, done many revolutions uh to bring uh the people to the power and all means uh, he had he had made many changes that is this uh rajiv gandhi yeah indra gandhi had another son that was uh, sanjay gandhi he was he got extra constitutional power during the time of emergency and he died forceful sterilization and why i'm telling the stories and all no you will know what happened after this if you know the story of this you will understand what is national emergency why we are having new changes and all so what happened sanjay gandhi did uh, in order to cut the population what he did is he did uh, sterilization forceful sterilization was being conducted to control the progress and what about a uh, non congressman this jay prakash narayan he was telling you don't obey this con unconstitutional orders he was being taken to jail so many violence so many atrocities and the government amended the constitution many times see in 1977 so somebody advised gandhi that you now can conduct election you definitely is going to win and she conducted election that was a failure of gandhi and emergence of a new politics a new party to the power that is this is for the first time in the indian history a new party apart from congress is being into power that is janata party won election and the government was being formed uh, by maraji deshai and deshai maraji deshai is the first non congress president a prime minister of india yeah so did you get the story of this uh, it was on june 25 1975 so that is why i told this emergency of 1975 was uh, leading to a new phase see i'm not a, i'm not talking based on parties and all this is history and we are discussing this history yeah yes so did you understand the story of this 1975 to 1977 see let me tell you it is very important because after this only we are going to see the new politics that is janata party and congress the first non congress man to become the president of uh, sorry prime minister of the country is whom can you tell me can you tell me who was he no not only sterilization there was many atrocities and violence so what happened in kerala uh, i think you have heard about some uh, case where a person was being taken and he was dead i don't remember his name right now currently but yeah many atrocities see you are uh, the uh, national emergency has been going on and many um, uh, what atrocities has been conducted and your liberty equality fraternity or your fundamental rights has been taken away and you are all supposed to sit in the home what happened to you 
atrocity it was violence forced to sterilization he is in a country like india he is in a democracy like india can you conduct this forced sterilization no it is not possible yeah we have to control po population uh, that is one of the uh, that is one of the must thing that we even have to do right now but it is not by force yes so our fundamental rights our constitution itself being amended so that is why it is known as the era from 1975 to 1977 was known as darker phase yeah so this was happened during the emergency that is a national emergency why i told the story first itself because no you will be you will get a more clear cut idea about after that when we are going to discuss so can you tell me what happened in 1977 election Maraji Deshai, that is the first non-Congress uh, non meant to come in election. So, now we are going to see a new political uh, phase after 1977 with Congress and BJP. Janata Party, Bharatiya Janata Party. Yes. Uh, so, now and then the changes, amendments. National emergency is declared on Article 352. What is this Article 352 is all about? So we'll see uh, till 1978. So Indra Gandhi has made many changes. So she made uh, this 42nd Amendment Act and all. 1978, when Bharatiya Janata Party was uh, being going on in power, they amended the uh, emergency thing and uh, Article 352 and inserted the word threatened by what an armed rebellion instead of internal disturbances basically in the constitution of india article 352 was discussing about internal disturbance and this internal disturbance was substituted by armed re rebellion the view is just a uh, different there is only a minute difference in the view but the entire thing has been totally being changed afterwards after this So why you need an uh, emergency? If there is an imbalance in the country, you can declare emergency. But what happened during this period, the darker phase, everything was being collapsed, right? So we'll see what is this national emergency uh, uh, under Article 352. The first is by Article 352 of the Constitution, you can uh, decide uh, like, yeah, you can conduct emergency if it is threatening the security of the country or any part of the country by war, external aggression or armed rebellion. Then in that condition, you can prepare, uh, proclaim national emergency in all part of India, uh, India or part of it. Suppose in Andaman and Nicobar, China is being declaring war and they are doing war with India. In only in Andaman and Nicobar, then at that place you can declare a national emergency or in the full country that is up to the government but in such a situation you can discuss this national emergency so how the national emergency is being proclaimed is it a simple procedure or a complicated procedure to declare the national emergency in a country so what is your idea about proclaiming this national emergency this is a simple process yeah so we are having a plus course in plus course you get live classes test series unlimited practice in structured course one month is like nine thousand rupees three months is like twenty two thousand five hundred rupees six months is like forty thousand five hundred rupees so this is the real price yeah but if you apply the code while uh, joining the an academy platform that is uh, biju you get a ten percent discount on it like uh, 12 months is like 49,500 you get it for 44,500 rupees and monthly installment is uh, like 3,713 rupees only yep 
every proclamation of emergency is to uh, lead uh, to be laid down before each house of the parliament yes so we'll see how the proclamation how the emergency is proclaimed so simply uh, so the china declared war on india so we decided that we are going to declare um, emergency that is not possible in the country please do be very attentive it so the president have to declare national emergency who is the person authoritative person to declare national emergency it is president of india okay he is a person he or she is a person who can whom can declare national emergency it is with him the power the ultimate power is with him so what is it so he have to hear the cabinet the cabinet will give recommendation that yeah we are facing an external aggression from uh, china or pakistan so we wanted a national emergency and this proclamation has to be so you cannot simply so if cabinet say that you have to give national uh, what is it <coughs> cabinet is telling the uh, president one day president of india please do proclaim emergency he can't do that okay you require the both the houses of the parliament that is the lok sabha and rajya sabha lok sabha plus rajya sabha have to proclaim uh it with absolute majority that is the total members of the house as well like two by third majority of members present and voting within one month within one month you have to consider this yeah otherwise proclamation cease to operate uh like one month you have to get approval so first we have what happened uh, the cabinet is con uh, considering there is a condition for the national emergency. So, what will they do? They will inform it to the cabinet. Okay, cabinet will uh, pass it for uh, vote. Absolute majority, that is two by third of the house which is present and voting have to proclaim it. After that, what will happen? It can continue for six months. Once the national emergency is being proclaimed, it can continue up to six months. After six months, uh, automatically it will be get cancelled or once again you have to get the approval of both the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha then uh, the president will uh, if uh, both the approval is being given by uh, the uh, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha then the president is also finding yeah there is a situation this is a situation to give national emergency this is this situation is much crucial so at that point of time the government himself can give this national emergency declare it so both of the sections have to agree to third majority i'll tell you please do write it like a small column you draw okay 352 external aggression only this words you have to write external aggression armed rebellion rebellion uh, yes then uh, just put an arrow and like a uh, right light of Lok Sabha Rajya Sabha 2 by 3rd majority right like this itself 2 by 3rd majority approved equal to president so that is according to article 352 if external aggression or armed rebellion is there then you can proclaim national emergency one within time one month Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha has to consider it with two-third majority if the president agrees it then it is a national emergency yeah Fine. 
So this is a case of national emergency one month at a time. So how can you revoke this national emergency? If a situation arises, if a situation demands that everything is going on, every the situation is improving much by it, then uh, the president can revoke it and say that, yeah, you don't want the national emergency. Yes, every situation is right, normal right now. So what you can do? You just cancel this uh, national emergency and goes on. See, how can you revoke this uh, national emergency? In order to stop this national emergency, whether you require two-third majority. No, you don't want two-third majority for this. That is, according to the 44th Amendment Act of the Constitution, 10 percentage members, that is 10 percentage or more members of Lok Sabha can uh, request a meeting in Lok Sabha. So they are deciding yeah, we are going to have a meeting. Then uh, in that meeting in Lok Sabha, it can disapprove or revoke the emergency by a simple majority. Fine. By a simple majority, they can stop it. See, to approve, to get approval for this uh, emergency, you need the two-third majority. But to stop it or to revoke it, you just want it. 10 percentage of the members present that is by a simple majority so what happens to when a national emergency is being proclaimed what have a lot happen uh, what is the features of a country i already discussed i think i have discussed it in half an hour section like in a So what happened? What will happen during the federal features of the Indian Constitution? See, the automatically the federal features of the Indian Constitution will be revoked. See, when a national emergency is uh, declared, our federal features will be turning to unitary fe uh, features. So the central will have more authority and it will increases the power. And uh, this increasing power can make laws for the entire country or part of therein. Even in respect of subjects mentioned in the state list. So you can make members, you can make things according to the members in the state list. So the president of India can issue directions to the state in manner which executive power of the state is to be evoked. Simple humble, I am telling you that is when the national emergency is being proclaimed, what will happen? Automatically, uh, federal feature. So, India is a federation, right? It is a quasi-federal state. Our quasi-federal features will be closed. And now onwards, India will be a unitary, fee, uh, unitary, uh, unitary feature of the country will be working out. What happens means when a national emergency is proclaimed, central government, okay, central government, <coughs> will become powerful so everything now onwards everything is being every possibility everything is being working out with the central government of the country not with anybody else so central government of the country decides everything and central government of the country will move with everything so the final authority uh, from now onwards is central government Yes, fine. Yeah, so this will happen. This is the problem. This is uh, things which is going to be associated with this national emergency. See, see, when a uh, national emergency is being declared, so what about us? So when the central government... Now, central government is having complete power. Okay, so what about the individual persons like you and me? Our rights is also affected. Okay, even in the matters which is related in the state list, the central government will come to the authority and they will decide 
and they will manage the things so every authority is now with the central government of the country right so who will give directions to the state government at this point of time the president will tell okay you do all these stuff according to the wish of us why so i told you in the beginning that indira gandhi she uh, come to power in 1970s allahabad high court say that she come to power by malpractices so she wanted to continue in power so fakhruddin ali ahmed uh, then the president advised her to proclaim national emergency how it happened during the turner of national emergency you can continue power up to one year so a union government is ruling the country in the center and uh, there is a situation uh, situation arises a situation demands uh, there as uh, there arise the situation which is demanding for this what national emergency so national emergency is being declared if the government have to resign that is uh, as in like 1975 the government have to come power uh, come down of the power right no that government can continue up to one year but after six months see once this uh, emergency is being de uh, declared no emergency afterwards after that only up to six months the power can be continued during national emergency a government whichever being central or state government is continuing they can continue up to one year this provision has been used by Indira Gandhi so that she become uh, so, so that she was in power to continue her power she uh, uh, has taken the advice from the Fakhruddin Ali, uh, Ali Ahmed and continued for one year so after this national emergency is being stopped no national emergency the president revoked the national emergency at that time onwards it can just go to six months yes up to six months this national emergency can be continued not only up after beyond that you cannot continue it national emergency beyond six months there is no possibility to continue in power once the national emergency is revoked up only up to six months you have to continue after that you have to conduct fresh elections so in that election in 1977 uh, Indira Gandhi uh, lost her power and Moraji Deshai come to power yeah so during the national emergency the president empowered so the president will become the sole authority to decide how to change the power means how to change the money between the central government and state government whom else will be the authority it is the it is with the central government okay so the president say okay we can just divide the money between central government and state government and we'll do like this So which all the articles automatically suspend during the uh, emergency provision which is revoked during article 19. So fundamental rights except article 20 and 21. Fundamental rights except article 20 and 21. Rest of the rights will be automatically cancelled article 19 will be automatically suspended article 19 so i already discussed what is article 19 what is article 19 freedom to right to speech right of freedom to write freedom to opportunity all those steps is coming no like freedom to profess not freedom to profess right to right to speak yeah so all those articles will be revoked automatically it will be suspended whatever being provisions coming under article 19 will be suspended automatically and article 20 and 21 will continue fine article 20 and 21 will be continuing yes
So did you understand about uh, national emergency under Article 352? Did you get an idea about it? Are you clear with the topics? See, this is a very simple topics, but uh, this is very important for you guys and uh, for every UPSC aspirant. Yes. Any law passed under Article 358 and 359 in order to be valid must contain recital to effect that it is in relation to the proclamation of emergency in operation. Yeah. So any doubt? Are you clear with the, the topics? So this is all about this national emergency. Now we'll deal with something that is what about article 20 and 21. See, you cannot simply suspend this article 20 and 21. If a situation arises at that time with the special majority and all, you can revoke this article 21 and 20, 20 and 21st. But uh, this will continue. This is a basic right, okay. Except Article 20 and 21, rest of the articles will be revoked during the national emergency. Now we are going to see about state emergency. What is a state emergency? Under uh, state emergency under Article 252, state emergency. Something known as President's Rule. Simply it is known as President's Rule. Article 356 is completely simply known as President's Rule. Okay, Article 356 is completely known as, it is proclamation is known as state emergency or simply humbly President Rule. The President is ruling the country. Then it is known as President's Rule. Yeah. This possibility you can see. It is constitutional duty of union uh, to protect its state against external aggression and internal disturbance. If a state mechanism is failed, then you can declare the process known as state emergency. So when the entire mechanism, entire machinery of the state collapses, it comes under direct control of the union government. So a state is failing. When a state becomes failure by itself, that is a state is going on completely and that state is just saying, yeah, we are not, our, our uh, constitution is going on fine, but the state is not able to continue with the functions, properly functions due to some mismanagement or something or other. The state is not able to continue its proper function, then comes emergency. Then the president can say that, uh, yeah, the country is not going on, but the state is not going on well and declare this article 356. So basically it comes when no, the coalition government that is uh, some going to like X and Y, X and Y collided to form a government, union government, okay, and a state government in the state of any state in the uh, India and once decided this X decided that we are not going to support Y and X draw back from it. So what happened? The ministries collapsed at that point of time the missionary, the entire missionary of the central government is stopped. So at that point of time you can declare emergency or something known as president's rule. So during this phase who is having the authority? Is president will come and directly rule the place. See, if you are appro approving, uh, yes, you can just approve this. Uh, you can declare 
national emergency without the approval of cabinet but within one month uh, after the declaration of emergency you must get approval otherwise no there is no national emergency it will con uh, automatically cancelled yeah so what is the problem with this initially you can extend this precedent rule in a place up to six months then after that you can continue it up to three years so the state emergency can extend it up to a period of three years in total like six months first you are declaring that the state missionary is completely collapsed you are going to work out it and it is continuing three months it will be continuing uh, six months it will be continuing after that yeah you have to continue it again it can continue up to three uh, three years again fine yep See, sometimes what is the problem with this article 356 no simply simply the central government is uh, what happens is no if any central government is ruling in the country whatever be upa or npa and it is having the problem with the state government any state government suddenly it will be telling that you are not ruling in a proper way so we are declaring war on uh, means you are declaring internal amend uh, means uh, we are declaring uh, this uh, state emergency under article 356 and they will continue it yeah so this is a problem so this is often into criticism this is a point where the criticism is being done so often the article 356 is misused so be it indira gandhi government or be it janata party government both use the power to dissolve the state government by opposition parties so since 2000 what happened the supreme court itself was fed up because of this by you uh central government is being ruled by a party named x upa is re, uh, going on um, ruling it and the upa is fine not fine with the, any state government upa decided that we are going to uh, declare state emergency and we are going to take the power because we can extend it up to three years right and the same way if it is your janata party government also decides yeah we are in the state we don't like this uh, state which is being ruled by other opposition parties we can declare state emergency so what happened the missionary of the system is being collapsed the supreme court was fed up with all these things and from 2000 onwards Strict guidelines has been given uh, to improve this. Uh, the Sarkaria Commission has point out that Article three fifty six must be used very sparingly and in extreme cases only. Sarkaria Commission also suggested so from two thousand onwards, the process, the process, which process, the process of forming government is being maintained so when did this first emergency was being declared yeah you all are hearing about emergency state emergency can you tell me when when was the first national emergency state emergency is being imposed upon the state nineteen fifty one it was in the year 1951 punjab is the first state to be declared under this national emergency sorry state emergency is punjab for the first time 1957 it was in kerala so we are going to see the procedures for proclaiming state emergency see in order to prove in order to conduct the state emergency like the national emergency itself you have to get the approval of the both the states in this case you have to give approval within two months see in order to proclaim a state president's rule 
like the national emergency itself you have to take it to the cabinet and you have to proclaim it for two months if approved by the president if approved by the parliament the proclamation remains valid for six months of time yes after that it will be continued yes up to three years unlike the national emergency which can be continued only up to one year this can be continued up to three years so this is a problem yeah so often it is misused so what are the procedure for revoking the state emergency see uh, two months uh, within two months if you are the state uh, if the cabinet is not approving this uh, state emergency it is automatically revoked okay so after it can cease to operate also if it is proclaimed and uh, there is no houses sitting of houses being happened till 30 days of the sitting of the house this problem this uh, uh, state emergency can be continued basically what happened the legislative assembly will be collapsed and it will affect the state government so always this criticism of president's rule the various occasion when how the president's rule is being uh, proclaimed though it is not in a good way what happened uh, during this president's rule what will happen the state assembly will be dissolved or it will be suspended so so all the constitutional missionaries will be taken by the president so only one thing you the code uh, the president can can't go and uh, inquire or work out that is the high court except the high court the authority of high court rest of the things the government the state of the state government can uh, the president can continue right yes this is so we are going to see a case of bommi in 1994 bommi case 1994 so what happened during this bommi case 1994 esa bommi bommi case the case was versus sr bommi versus union of india So this case was related to article 356 of the constitution the case mainly came up with the issue of power of president in proclamation under article 356 the constitutional power to dissolve the state legislative assemblies and also issue relating to the federalism and secularism as a part of basic structure of the constitution that is in sr bombay case of 1994 he was fed up with this thing so he what he did he just went and uh, sr bombay versus union of india he questioned what is the authority and how this president can proclaim national emergency under article 356 of the constitution including the power to dissolve the state legislature also relating to the federalism and secularism as a part of the basic structure so he declared that until you are getting approved so what happened supreme court tell that okay this is yeah this is something very much against the constitution sometime it is misused so supreme court declared that without the governor is ruling according to the authority of president what president says governor is ruling the supreme court held in sr bombay case that you cannot dissolve the assembly unless you are getting approval by the parliament
IK Gujral government and once they were ruling in the Gujarat, IK sorry, IK Gujral government of Uttar Pradesh uh, revoked for this proclamation of national emergency when it went to the whom the president he said that please go and reconsider, I'll reconsider it. Yes. Now we are going to discuss something known as financial emergency. What is this financial emergency is all about? What is it all about? Do you have any idea? So far, we don't know what is financial emergency. We know that Article 360 is discussing about financial uh, emergency. So far, we don't have a case where we had uh, this uh, financial emergency. So what happened during financial emergency? According to the Constitution of India, Union government, when a financial emergency is devolved or replayed uh, under 360 of the Constitution, Union government will give directions to any state regarding financial matters. So, any uh, condition when the financial matters is being going on, who is the authority to give it? It does finance states regarding financial matters. Union government may give direction to any states. Union government may give direction to any states regarding financial matter. So, what events this financial emergency is declared? So, who will be the authority after that? The authority for declaring anything and anything will be the which government? Union government. That is the central government decides matters regarding the so, thing. so, the president may ask states to reduce salaries. When a financial emergency is declared, your salary will be reduced automatically. When financial emergency is declared, salary will be reduced. Not only for the private or public employees, but for the state government employees. Like, even the salaries and allowances of any class of persons in the government can be, be reduced. When a financial emergency is proclaimed, okay. The president also can ask the state to reserve all the money bills. This president says so money bill. State will also pass money bill, right? So what about the money bill? State when state a uh, money bill is being passed, it will be given to the central government. When in, in a financial emergency, if state is passing it, it will be given to the central government and parliament will be considered it. It also gave uh, directions to the central government employees and the Supreme Court judges and all. Now onwards, we are going to reduce. Yes. So, do you have any doubt? Fine. So, fundamental rights versus emergency, that is very important, okay. Fundamental rights versus emergency. During the period of emergency, what happened? Automatically, Article 19 under fundamental rights will be suspended. Yes. You cannot suspend Article 20 and 21 in any case. Article 20 and 21, you cannot suspend it. At any point of time, at any case, simply or humbly, simple humble that you cannot Stop this article 20 and 21. It will continue. Rollo 42nd and 44th amendment. 
So what happened during the 42nd Amendment Act of 1976? So in 42nd Amendment, what happened? No, they declared that the amendment say that simply the Supreme Court or High cannot uh, High Court cannot say that some rule, some uh, something in the country is unconstitutional. You cannot say that. The rule being there, it is, you cannot say it as unconstitutional. Simply you are telling, yeah, this is unconstitutional. That is not a possibility here. Yeah. Fine. So many things what are being amended in the 42nd amendment, it was re-amended in article 48th amendment. So this is the basic idea about the fundamental rights, emergency provisions of the state constituency. The financial emergency, we just we just have the basis, that's it. We, do, we have never come across a situation known as the financial emergency. So it is not possible to explain how the situation will be, but these are the possible chances of it. Yep. So we'll wind up section. Today's section is like one hour and one hour, 15 minutes, a very small section on uh, emergency. This is all you have to study. I have mentioned everything. So that's it. You are winding up the section. You can use the code BIJU and get a 10% discount on any of the subscription and you can enroll yourself in an academy plus. So thank you winding up. So 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. We are having geography today. So see you there.